Hi and welcome to the very first one of our 15 minute fundamental sessions for SAP Business One. In this session we're going to focus on financials. So that's a lot of F's but let's break it up by actually talking about uh, a G and the G is general ledger. So if you think about SAP Business One and for that matter any financials package the general ledger is really at the center of almost everything that you do inside the system. Every transaction that you enter in the system that has some kind of accounting impact ends up in some way, shape or form in the general ledger. So that's why it's such an important area to get right. So what we want to do is just talk a little bit in this session about some of the basics of working with the general ledger, of working with the chart of accounts, and then understanding some of the key areas in SAP Business One. Now, it's important to remember that when it comes to the chart of accounts, you have two options. Chances are you're already utilizing a fully implemented SAP Business One system. So many of the decisions about utilizing the different capabilities of the general ledger have probably already been made inside the organization. But if you haven't already started using SAP Business One, it's probably not a bad idea to get a little bit of an understanding of what some of the core areas are in the general ledger. So the chart of accounts is really the key to everything that you do. And I'm not going to make an assumption that you're an accountant. I'm not going to make an assumption that you understand everything about accounting. So what I'm going to try and do is keep this at a fairly standard level. Uh, if I talk about some things that you already understand, I do apologize, but hopefully we want to make sure that these sessions are beneficial for everyone. So I always like to set a little bit of a baseline. So when you think about it in SAP Business One and any financials package for that matter, you have to have a chart of accounts and this is fundamentally a list of all the accounts where you're going to create financial transactions and allocate those financial transactions against those accounts. Once you have those accounts set up and you've started posting financial transactions against them, you're then able to start generating your reports, your profit and loss, your balance sheet, your statement of cash flows, your statement of retained earnings. So you've got all these different capabilities. So then the first question that a lot of people ask is, well, how do I structure my chart of accounts? How should I set up the numbers? Because every account has to have a number. But your numbering sequences in SAP Business One have a lot of different options. So for example, you can see right now, we are looking at an existing chart of accounts. Uh, and this is a standard chart of accounts that's set up in the sample data for SAP Business One. Now there's a couple of things that you're gonna notice here when you're looking at the chart of accounts. You'll see SAP have decided to use this concept of drawers. Okay, and these drawers are like um, the, the high level buckets that the accounts sit under. So if you have any um, understanding of financial concepts, and I know there's a lot of people out there who this is what you do all day, all night. Um, so, you know, this is very, very simple for you. But you'll, if you don't, you, one of the things you need to realize is that all of these accounts fall under one of these key areas. You're either accounting for assets, liabilities, you're accounting for your equity, you're accounting for your revenues, the cost of sales, expenses, financing, and so on. But in more recent versions of SAP Business One, you have the ability to add additional high level uh, buckets. It used to be that you were limited only to these top level uh, buckets that SAP had hard coded into the product, but you now have a lot more flexibility. But I think it's a good way to start by looking at these high level buckets. So for example, if you look at assets, if you think about it, assets, these are the things that the business owns. So you have your assets broken down into your current assets, your fixed assets, you have long-term assets, all right? But of course, you're not limited to these headings that you see here. Again, this is just an example uh, of the information that is available to you. Now, each one of these areas, each one of these subheadings, if you like, represents a different level in the chart of accounts. Now, the great thing about these levels 
is that they enable you when you're generating your reports to automatically have all of the amounts and all of the accounts subtotaled at a certain level. So you can see as much detail as you want or you can have that detailed rolled up to keep it simple. And we'll see that when we have an opportunity to look at reporting. But let's drill down again and let's look at some of these accounts in more detail. So when you're in the chart of accounts, you actually have two ways of working with the chart of accounts in SAP Business One. Right now, I have the opportunity to look at the chart of accounts here, all right? And I have got the opportunity to come in here and I can pick any one of these buckets and then pick any one of these accounts inside the system and I can see all the details of the account. I can see the account number. Not only can I see the natural account number, which is the main part of the account, but if I've got what's called a segmented chart of accounts, I have the ability to see those segments. Now, when you set up Business One, you can nominate what those segments are. And this is one of the things that either your accountant, um, your, uh, the head of your finance team, maybe a team of people inside the organization will decide upon, or maybe you'll get some advice from your SAP Business One partner on. Um, but you have a lot of flexibility with the chart of accounts segmentation. And you can specify that not only do you have the natural account, but you can also say, well, look, you know what? I've got three more segments. And you can see when I hover over them, it's telling me this first segment is being defined as the division. The second segment is the region. And the third segment is the department. So all of these are user definable. And that then gives you the ability to start doing all kinds of reporting and again, narrowing it down by division. You can see sales by division, or you could see sales by department, or you could see you know, all your expenses by uh, region, whatever you want. So the key to this is making sure you do make some good decisions about the way you've structured your chart of accounts. All right. So, and then you can see um, once you've got your account number specified, then of course um, you give that account a name. Then you've got your additional GL account details. Now, one of the things that's really nice about SAP Business One is that you have the ability to record an external code. So maybe you're in a situation where you have to report numbers up to head office and head office might be using a different system. Maybe they're using um, the, the big brother of SAP Business One. Maybe they're using SAP ECC 7 or ECC 6 or you know maybe they're using um, SAP s hana or maybe they're using Oracle Financials or maybe some other solution. And that account has a different numbering structure in that system. So what you can do with this external code is you can actually record the code for this account in that external system. Where does that help you? Well, then you can push out your reporting and utilize that external code. You could also even push out all the transactions so they could be reposted in that external system utilizing the external code. So a lot of capability there. You also have the ability to specify that an account um, is limited to a specific currency or can have transactions post against it in all currencies. You also have the ability to specify if it's a confidential account, so only certain people have access to it. And that's where you're specifying at what level does this account sit. So when you start printing your reports and you're rolling up, um, you can actually get those to group in the right areas. Now, of course, because we're looking at the chart of accounts here, um, utilizing this first option of chart of accounts, you can see what the balance is. And there's our golden arrows. You can click on the link and it'll drill you down and it'll show you all of the transactions that are in that account. Now, of course, when you do that drill down, you have to um, specify some uh, restrictions here. You know, what posting dates do I want to see? Um, how many of the transactions do I want to display? Do I want to display unreconciled transactions only? So, you know, you've got a lot of flexibility here in what you can see. And then, of course, when you're looking at the transactions in the um, in the account detail, you then have the ability, again, using the uh, golden arrows with this origin number, you can click on that and it'll drill you back and it'll show you the original transaction itself. So here's a transaction that came from um, a journal entry and this journal entry was a recurring posting from payroll. 
all right so a lot of flexibility there and of course as it is with the rest of SAP Business One you get uh, the ability to go right back and and see how all these transactions are related all right um, and you can even right click on here and you can say show me the applied transactions gives you that detailed view on that line that you've selected all right so you've got a, a, a lot of flexibility there now you can also specify the account type if it's sales expenditure or other if it's a control account um, whether it's a cash account whether it is an account that's subject to currency revaluations and if you're using cost accounting we're going to talk about that in one of our other fundamental sessions um, whether or not it relates to a specific project so a lot of uh, a lot of information there and a lot of capability in the way that you structure the chart of accounts now of course when you've got your account there you can click here on account details and it'll drill down and show you even more information in here all right um, and again a lot of this information is is a lot more detailed so again this is fundamental so we want to stay at a fairly high level at the moment so that's the chart of accounts and you can see you can come in here and you can edit some things like you can edit the name um, and you can um, specify whether or not it's a control account or you can specify if it's a cash account now of course the thing to remember is if you've already started making postings to your account some of these things will not be able to be changed so you always need to bear that in mind one thing that you can't actually do here in this screen is you cannot add an account so if you want to add an account, what you have to do is you have to come here into the edit chart of accounts capability. So what you can do here when you're going through the edit chart of accounts is you have uh, the ability to narrow it down. So you can say, look, just show me all of my accounts that are relating to revenues because I want to create some accounts or do some uh, editing of my chart of accounts only focused on the sales account. So you can just pick the revenues or you can select them all or you can grab two out of the three. It's really up to you. Then you say, OK. And what do you now see? Notice the, 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 the filing cabinet has disappeared. Again, why? Because we've made that decision here. We've specified what we're going to see. So now I've got my accounts. Um, and I have the ability now to delete the account if I want to. So remember, the system's only going to let you delete an account if there aren't any transactions posted against it. So I can come in here as well and I can go up here to data. I can go through and I can find accounts or of course I can come in and I can add an account. I'm also able to move these accounts around and you'll see when I have an account here for example I've got my sales revenue foreign and then I've got my sales revenue Canada so I could say you know what I actually want to move this account up in the drawer so right now you'll see it's after my 412 with all those different zeros but I could say I actually want it before that account okay so I can move it up to the first position or I could say I actually want it after the four triple one account so if I say after four triple one there you go it's now moved that account up above my sales revenues foreign so again this is helpful when you are starting to do your reporting of course you know when you're entering transactions in a lot of the time you're just going to be doing your transaction entry and doing the lookups on the account codes so to a certain extent the order of the accounts doesn't matter so much there but you'll see it comes into play when you're doing your reporting because when you're building your financial reports you can put reports onto the financial report oh sorry you can put accounts onto the financial reports by selecting a range of accounts or selecting a group of accounts or selecting everything at a certain level all right, so that makes it very, very um, important that you get this structure and this order right. So hopefully that makes sense. And then when I've done that, once I've made the change that I want, I can go in here and I can say update. And now it commits that change across into the system for me. 
So that's a little bit of a look at the chart of accounts um, and, and that structure. But when you're originally setting the system up, all right, when you are making those first level decisions, when you go into your administration and you go into your setup and you are inside your financials, so you come in here into setup and you look at financials, you'll see this is where there is a lot of that additional information that is available and this is where you configure those 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 settings so for example with your account segmentation we've set up our account segmentation and we've said you know what I've got my natural accounts I've then got my divisions I've got my regions and my departments so my account structure is eight characters for the natural account two for the division three for the region four and two for the department so what I can do now is you'll see if I double click on that segment it gives me then the ability to go in and start creating all the underlying information for those departments so I can go in here and say alright I'm adding department 2 and department 2 is going to be um, let's say for example audit and compliance just for the sake of the exercise, I mean, I'm not sure of how many small or mid-sized businesses have an audit and compliance department, but anyway, that's the one I've picked. Um, so I'm going to give that a short name of AC, and then I can say update, and that's now done. So I can go in and I can now start creating accounts with that department against it. But of course, if you've got lots of accounts, that's going to be a fairly long drawn out process. So the thing to bear in mind is that inside SAP Business One, not only do you have the ability to create those accounts one by one, but if I go in here and I drill down into financials, you'll see I've got this account code generator. So I've got the ability to go in here and I can say, all right, I want to take this natural account and now I want to generate um, you know, all of the accounts with all of these combination of divisions, regions and departments and have it automatically create those accounts for me. All right, so that's really, really nice. Um, makes it very, very easy. And of course, this is, if you're just doing a one-off account, um, you can do that here. All right. So there's a range of additional things that you can do inside SAP Business One that tie back to the general ledger and your financials. So if you go down here, you'll actually see you have the ability to create your budgets. You have the ability to do cost accounting. So um, setting up your budgets is a fairly straightforward process and we'll talk about budgets in a little bit more detail in another session. Actually the same with cost accounting. but fundamentally what the budgets allow you to do is go in and create budgets and then um, then pick those budgets and incorporate those into your financial report so you can do budget versus actual now none of this might be particularly earth shattering for you you might be sitting there going well of course it can do that what financial solution can't do that well there's quite a few out there and uh, particularly the smaller ones that don't give you that capability so um, SAP business one does give you that and this is where you go to find it again it's in the financials module and it's down here under the budget setup remember this is fundamental so just giving you a few pointers to get you started so you've got your budget scenarios budget distribution methods and your budget so budget scenarios are different um, ways of building a budget where you are basing it on for example another budget and doing um, increases or decreases based on existing numbers that are in inside your financials okay so you can build all these different budget scenarios so this is really helpful for starting to do what ifs so you could start off with okay it's 2018 financial year uh, we've set our budget we've adopted our budget but now we want to say well what if we have a 15 percent increase in revenue what will our budget look like and what will our financial reports look like so this is where the budget scenarios capability really helps you to do that uh, and then with your cost accounting as well with cost accounting you have the ability to create these dimensions and cost centers where you can allocate transactions not only to the financial accounts but you can also apply the different dimensions to transactions so what does dimensions do it gives you additional ways of looking at your financial reports so you might say um, 
I've got my three segments. I'll give you an example. I've got my three segments, which is my, you know, my division, my region, and my department. And then I've got my natural account. So let's say I'm looking at the cost of my vehicles. All right, so I've got, I can go and I can analyze my cost of vehicles by any one of those four, by of course the natural account, but then by one of those three segments. But then let's say I also wanted to be able to track vehicle costs against my employees or against a project or um, some other example, but employees is a, is a fairly typical one. Well, that's where these dimensions can help you all right, because then you can allocate the transaction against those dimensions, and that's a non-financial um, kind of allocation. All right, so it doesn't have to be debits equaling the credits, because you can just say, you know what, I'm going to allocate. I've got a thousand dollars in, you know, uh, fuel charges, but I'm only going to allocate, you know, sixty dollars of that against this particular employee, and the rest of it's going to remain unallocated, or whatever the case may be. Now. You can also build what are called distribution rules. So you can predefine whenever I do my posting of rent, for example, I'm going to automatically distribute rent. I'm going to put 30% to this cost center, 20% to this cost center, and 50% to this cost center. So you've got that capability in here in, um, in your distribution rules. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your reporting like your budgets versus um, from a cost accounting perspective. And of course, then you've got your reconciliation capabilities. Your financial reports, you get done down here in the financial reporting area. And of course, there's a full suite of those reports available. Um, you know, you've got your trial balance and here comes my accounting joke. Um, what happens if your trial balance doesn't balance? Well, it doesn't matter, it's only a trial. Um, if you're an accountant, hopefully you get it. Um, if you're not, you're probably sitting there going, what the hell is he talking about? But anyway, um, so you've got your accounting reports, uh, you have you got your financial reports, your, like your balance sheet, your trial balance, your P&L, statement of cash flows and so on. Your comparison reports, where you're able to compare one year to another your budget reports, and for those of you who have to deal with such things, you have your interest at reports. So that's a little bit of a, a kind of a basic introduction to the general ledger um, that's in SAP Business One. In our next session, we're gonna drill down and start looking a little bit deeper at setting up your financial reporting.